It's the girl that everyone wants to cover with their cream, Princess Daisy Donovan. <laughs> and even our man in the Balkans cares. It's his royal shyness, Mackenzie Crook. Happy birthday, you Madge. <laughs> But now it's time to join our very own king, the monarch of the mirror, the sultan of the sun, the duke of the Daily Mail, the star of the star, and someone quite important on the Independent on Sunday. Review section. Tommy Vance and his new slam. Wednesday, April the 21st. And the queen gets a birthday bash, Korean style. Everyone's wearing grotesque masks. Take it off, your majesty. You're scaring the children. <laughs> Only kidding, Lizzie. You gargoyle. <laughs> From South Korea to Yakida and oh no, the Welsh want to speak their own language in their new assembly. Frankly, who cares? No one gives a shit what the Welsh say anyway. <laughs> Just as long as they don't flob it all over you. <laughs> From a redundant race to a weekend in space. And rocket buffins say holidays in orbit may soon be possible. Space hotels? Are they serious? Gus Boots is. Hi, Gus. I hear Uranus is nice this time of year. <laughs> and I've also heard good things about your cock and balls. <laughs> From space vacations to nasal operations. And surgeons say they can cure snoring. Luckily, I don't snore. I sleep like a baby. Crying, clutching a bottle on rubber sheets in a shit-filled nappy. <laughs> That's show business. Very, very exciting. <laughs> now, we all know that you should never believe everything you read in the papers, except for the Daily Sport, which is all completely true. Right down to the Italian Lesbians Live on 089123456. Good number. But here are some of today's smaller stories that you may have missed in our Red Top Roundup. A Navy pilot yesterday was caught taking his family for a dangerous joyride in a £7 million Lynx helicopter. Police say they're looking for this man. <laughs> Lance Corporal Nigel Horsley is to face a court-martial for allegedly ironing a hamster. Perhaps he liked a nice crease in his hamster, whereas we hear Richard Gere likes a nice hamster up his crease. <laughs> <laughs> or us. <laughs> a, skull, a skull has been found which shows that Neanderthal man may have mated with humans. So that explains this, then. <laughs> Get out of here. And finally, Jack Straw got into trouble for a joke he made about Scousers always being up to something. Furious at being stereotyped in this way, a group of Liverpudlians said, Hey, Jack, calm down, calm down, calm down, just as they were stealing the wheels from his car. <laughs> and then heading off to score some crack cocaine. <laughs> then going to a pub in London and telling all the local drinkers how everybody from Liverpool is a natural comedian and Paul McCartney is their father. <laughs> Daisy. Ian, coming up later, our fake documentary maker falsifies the facts on immigration, and with us Britons eating too much, we find out if in ten years' time, Ian will look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Philip, what a dozy bastard. <laughs> no, I'm not being flippant about the work child scrote. That would be rude. It's official. He really is dozy. Yesterday in Korea, he fell asleep during one of his wife's speeches. <laughs> The mirror reveals that while Liz banged on about the war and the state of Korea's economy, the prince slumped in a snoring heap. <coughs> but why was Philip so tired? Daisy, do you know? Well, Ian, the answer's on the same page as the story. Duke hits out over porn on internet. Just hours before he dozed off, Prince Philip attacked the quality of material available on the net, singling out porn. So that's why he's so tired. He's staying up all night trying to find quality smut on the web. But why would you want to resort to porn when you've got the queen in your bed? I don't know. And if she blossoms like a mother, she'll soon be looking like this. <laughs> With the war entering its second record-breaking month, our very own battling broadcaster Mackenzie Crook is still out there in the Balkans entertaining our boys. We can go over to him now. Hi, Mackenzie. It's Ian. What's happening? Well, Ian, it's Balkan Roadshow time. And where are we today? Well, a few clues. We're in a bombed-out wasteland, a pit of misery in the middle of an international crisis zone. Any guesses? Coventry. 
No, very droll. No, we're in the Albadian border town of Kooks. Crazy name, crazy town. Can you hear me, Kooks? Hey. I said, can you hear me, Kooks? Yes, we can hear you. And uh, what road show will be complete without Smiley Miley? We've got our very own Smiley Milosevic. Smiley, how many miles did your troops advance through Kosovo yesterday? Oh, 300 miles, Crookie. 300 miles, and the nearest guess comes from... Denise in Montenegro. You and we in our roadshow goodie bag. Got it here. It's got in it 20 Marlboro Light, some uh, darts flights, Blow Monkeys T-shirt, a Wellington boot here. This was a gift from yesterday's guest, famous comedian Jimmy Cricket. Funny guy! And, uh, <laughs> and a signed photo of me. <laughs> Whoa! What is it good for? Wet, 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 tell us. Thank you, Mackenzie. More from him later. A report in the Mail claims that women speak twice as much as men. No, but, they, they uh, they Hang don't. on, I'm speaking. Now, um, I went out with my gift of the gab to find out more. According to the Daily Mail, women talk more than men. Oh, I was chatting to Kate, Anna and Eliza yesterday over lunch and we thought that was rubbish. But how could you make men better communicators? I went undercover in London to see if I could get them to talk. I'm having trouble with my crossword. Oh, I'm going to do it crossword. I, know, I bet you've got better vocabulary than me. Um, it's one across. What, it's an exit hole. Exit hole? B. U. What? <laughs> the other one is... S P dash N K um, slang for male ejaculatory. Well, it's gonna, if it's a word, it's going to be spunk. Spunk. Yeah. Can you just open this letter? Because I think it's for my boyfriend. I think he's going to dump me, and I can't face reading it myself. Oh my gosh! This is after eight wonderful years. Um, you can't tell you how painful it is for him to write oh. this letter. Mm. And I'm not in love with him. Oh, no. <laughs> he loves you, but he doesn't. He loves me, but he doesn't. He loves you, but he's not in love with you. Well, what the fuck is he, then? I don't know. Right, what That's shall right. I say back to him? It's up to you. Is that, is... What would... OK, no, what would hurt a bloke? He's a bastard run... What? Big shit. I don't know. <laughs> Big shit, that'll be the one, won't it? <laughs> Sex is rubbish. Yeah. You were like that. Him, not me. Not you, you're like that. Yeah. OK, <laughs> okay. I'll tell him that. That's a bit unethical. Yeah, I've just lost my job. Yeah. yeah. And I just wondered if you'd do that and do a public show and tell me that everything's going to be all right. Oh, leave me alone. Will you do that to me? <laughs> just quickly. And then if you make a face, and then I can ask you questions. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, I'm worried because I haven't had anybody to talk to and I've lost my job and I think that things are going bad. Oh. My brother used to do this thing with me. He used to sing Away in a Manger. Right. Do you know how it goes? We could sing it together. Away in a manger. <laughs> so there you have it. Men don't use as many words as us, but they still talk just as much bollocks. From <laughs> Daisy Donovan in London for you. That was great. Very good. Did you get off with any of those now? Did you get off with any of those? <laughs> the British... The British used to profit from honest hard work, like the arms trade and benefit fraud, but now we've turned to the shady world of the law for easy money. A new study reveals that Britain is blighted by a £6 billion culture of blame and compensation. New no-win, no-fee solicitors mean we now claim for almost anything that happens. For example, holidaymaker Jean Grattan sued her travel company after a coconut fell on her breast <laughs> and received a massive £1,700 payout. Oh, imagine that. Coconut and breast together. <laughs> My two favourite milks. <laughs> Robber Stephen Sharalambus sued the Metropolitan Police after they shot him while he was robbing a post office van. God, what were the police thinking of? Shooting an armed robber? They're wasting bullets when they could be beating up innocent passers by. Right on, man. Right on, days. Cops are dumb, man. So come on, people of Britain. We're on to a winner here. It's the chance of an easy buck. 
think about it. We could all sue these three hairy-faced misery mongers for emotional and mental trauma. Look. The Kurds get a million out of mustachioed monster Saddam for all the misery he's caused them. <laughs> Women everywhere can make a mint out of this bearded Lothario. <laughs> And finally, we could all be quids in if we sued this hairy growler for emotional torture. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, not just a common expletive. Apparently, it's also the name of a man who, in olden times, was worshipped by millions. But what does the future hold for the King of the Jews? Well, I went back to school to talk to the kids about all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. What's going down? Well, religion is, especially here at Stretton Wells Primary School, which is why I've come to talk to the kids to find out their naive and childish views on the subject. So we're here talking about religion. Mm. What is God? Uh, he's a funny-looking guy that makes people. Does God ever get drunk? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You go to bars and pubs up there. You go to bars and pubs up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why does it? What, what? What does he drink? What's his favourite drink? Um, uh, orange juice and lager. <laughs> Who would you think would be in hell? Um, the um, devil. Hitler. Richard Baker. Oh yeah, someone from the Bill who crashed on his wife. I can't remember his name. Was that when it, the bloke used to like a drink? Yeah. Tosh Lyons. He poisoned himself. So Tosh Lyons poisoned himself. Yeah. And now he's in hell. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good. What are the Ten Commandments? I know. Don't steal. Don't drink any alcohol. Yep. Mm. Not to drink the water, water from but the you toilet can't stay That's four. Late. Can't stay out late. That's fine. Thou shalt not stay out late. Mm. Don't wear glasses if you need them. Thou shalt not wear glasses if you need them. <laughs> Kill the bugs all the time. Well, what would be really nice is if we can just close our eyes and we'll say a prayer to God and we'll all ask for a PlayStation. Yeah. Would you like to lead? Who would like to lead the prayer? Uh, me. No, not me. Dear God, please, can we have a PlayStation? Thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Doctor Soaps. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to turn on the telly, they're back. Only this time, their names are worse. The latest, set in the hilarious world of pest control, is called. Life of Grime. <laughs> What's wrong with calling it the Pest Controllers? Well, that's probably already earmarked for a docu-soap on nannies or rat hypnotists. <laughs> These new names are sure to become a trend. How long before we see a series on lap dancers called Snatch of the Day? Mm. <laughs> Not soon enough, but we do, we do have to put a stop to these terrible titles, and we can with your help. Yep, for just £300, and this is absolutely true, we can copyright any name for a show and stop it being made. So send us your cash and we'll copyright the following titles before they make it to our screens. OK, here we go. Docky soaps about bricklayers, the hod couple, about gynaecologists changing wounds, double glazing salesmen, you've been framed, prostitutes come dancing, lingerie shops, the bras, the star, opticians, sex in the city, bodybuilders, pets in the city, badger watchers, sex in the city, pet sellers, pets. the answers to yesterday's Jerry Halliwell quiz, whose debut single, Look At Me, is released on Monday. The answer to question one was, she was Ginger Spice. Question two, the answer was A, she left the group voluntarily to seek the wider opportunities of a solo career, and not as many of you thought B, because she was crap. <laughs> question three, she's now a UN goodwill ambassador, although we would have accepted a freeloading, publicity-seeking, junket-taking, island-hopping, round-the-world cruising ginger pudding. <laughs> And finally, question four. A lot of you got this wrong. She is, in fact, 25 and has been since 1959. <laughs> and today's winner is a Mr Darren Day, who wins another engagement ring and a date with Daniela Westbrook. <laughs> now, it's claimed that America is ten years ahead of Britain. First it was AIDS and then it was skateboarding. And most recently, heart to heart. <laughs> when they met, it was murder. <laughs> <laughs> So, what's the latest craze winging its way across the Atlantic? Be prepared, because it's fat. Like America, Britain is becoming a nation of fat, lazy sloths, and it's reckoned by 2010 one in four of us will look like this. <laughs> 
Could that happen to us? Well, to find out, please welcome top dietitian Amanda Wynn. Yeah. Lovely. Now, Amanda, you are a genuine dietitian, aren't you? Absolutely. What exactly does that mean? Basically, if you're a state registered dietitian, then you're qualified to give professional dietary advice. Right. Okay, that sounds fair enough. Now, can being uh, obese be a good thing? Because I've got to be honest, I've never met a nasty fat man. I don't think it is a good thing, actually. <laughs> now, Boeing have claimed that they're going to make bigger planes to allow for fatter people. Do you think that this means that other companies like, I don't know, Armitage Shanks will have to make bigger bowls for fatter asses? <laughs> is that... I've no idea, but certainly the way things are going, yeah. everybody's becoming fatter, obesity's more than doubled over the last 20 years. Yeah. So it may well be that we have to look at bigger seats for people. The big, fat, hairy cracks. Now, <laughs> now, serious question, how fat do you have to be before you can work in a chip shop? <laughs> I don't what's, think there's any answer There's no standardisation or... or I don't think so. OK, that's fine. Just, I got turned down because I was too skinny. Really? Now, in one word, sex. How do two chuffers do it? <laughs> no idea. Is, no, I mean, it's, it is a serious issue. Is there a favoured a favored position for the fat person? You might have to ask an overweight person that okay. question. Personally, I wouldn't know. Do you think our attitudes to pin-ups and models will change and that fatter ladies like Sophie Dahl and Martine McCutcheon will become more, more <laughs> sexy? More, <laughs> social, no, more acceptable? <laughs> Well, you know, these women might be slightly mm. heavier than your average mm. model, but by no stretch of the mm. imagination could you describe them as fat. Mm. And I'd like to see mm. more women of that kind of weight being role models. Mm. OK. Now, if you think that people can get thin and we can avoid this potential disaster of, of obesity in, in 2010, can we expect to see this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly humorous picture. I don't think it'll happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Wynn. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks Prince Charles' older and, in fact, only son, William, was out in the town this week celebrating the 21st birthday of one of Camilla's foals, Laura. John Betchman's grandson was there. Here he is. Come friendly bums. <laughs> so, what exactly went on at this crazy party? I'm not sure the papers are giving us the whole crack, so let's find out what the papers ought to say in our regular feature, What the Papers Ought to Say. Before the party began, the revellers had a bite to eat, according to today's son. Restaurant boss Mimo said, I recognise Prince William and there were a great many girls at the table. When what they meant was... Girls, 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 he likes girls, I can't believe it! <laughs> the Mirror reports... William sat next to Camilla's niece, ex-model Emma Parker Bowles, 24, whom he had seemed close to earlier on in the year. And what they ought to have said is... Oh, steady on, William. Aren't you inbred enough? And remember, she's going to look like Camilla when she's older. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the son notes that... William stuck to soft drinks all night. When what they meant was... Gaylord. <laughs> Time to go back now to our voice of British Forces Radio, Mackenzie Crook. Let's have a little listen and see what he's up to. And I turned to the little boy and I said to him, See that Harrier jump jet overhead? In his own way, God is like that jump jet. He has tremendous power. He brings peace to the world. Although he does lack the Harrier's unique vertical takeoff and landing system. <laughs> and you know what that little boy said to me? Well, nor do I, because he was Albanian. Uh, <laughs> Mackenzie, hello, it's Ian. Can you hear me? Sorry, Ian, caught me in the middle of a, a bit of a serious bit, but you're just in time for our crazy roadshow riddle. Riddle me wee! <laughs> and uh, the question is, what's the difference between an Albanian Kosovan and a Serb? The answer, nothing. They just seem to rub each other up the wrong way. <laughs> Mackenzie, stop this roadshow nonsense now and tell me more about the situation over there. Yeah, well, Ian, I think we have to pay special attention to the increase in NATO firepower brought about by the arrival of British aircraft carrier HMS Invincible. Good, carry on. And for all the boys on board, here's Rock the Boat by Forrest. <laughs> Join in with the boat dance, boys. <laughs> See you later, Mackenzie, you simple fool. <laughs> Illegal immigrants. They're what gives Wandsworth its affordable housing and unique cosmopolitan charm. <laughs> but are all those seeking asylum for real? We sent our genuine fake documentary maker, Paul Garner, out to falsify some facts about this controversial subject. 
With the current state of unrest in Eastern Europe, Britain is often viewed as a soft target for asylum seekers or refugees. With protest groups declaring that our benefit system is already stretched to the limit, I've been speaking to people from the heart of the matter to see how we are or should be dealing with the problem. I've got to do a report on the immigration issue and I've got to get it back into London within a couple of hours. I haven't got time to find the real people, OK? If I don't get it, I lose my job. I've got kids, you know. So I just wondered if you could make out you were somebody with a problem in this country, yeah? Yeah. I'm an Albanian. I've been... came to this country on a British Airways uh, <laughs> undercarriage and I'm frozen holding the wheels. You're frozen in that position? I certainly am, yes. I, I can't move. <laughs> the shock of this Soviet experience has given me an awful head back. I've got this tick in my head and I can't get rid of it. Can, we need you to flinch to kind of go... <clears throat> a bit more violently. 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 And once again, really savage this time. Well, I... <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to bring a jacket over for you to make it, make it look like... Oh, you're about the right size. Make it look like you work at Heathrow and that yeah. you've, you've seen some really awful scenes of uh, corruption at Heathrow with bribes being given. Can you now make out you're really upset and wipe tears away from your eyes and say, what is Britain coming to? What is Britain coming to? <laughs> you know, with all these things, you, you don't know what to do. It's disgusting to <laughs> get strawberry go oh, given as a bribe at Heathrow. Was it like this one? Was it like this one? Yes, it was. It's disgusting. We're going to make out that you've come over from Chechnya uh, in the former Soviet Union and that you've had to marry this English girl here. Well, I say, I'm saying something and then she's, she's translating it to you. That's right. Oh, yeah, because right, you're so. the foreign chap, yeah? Tell me what happened to you that night back in September. Ich weiß, ich weiß, ich weiß, ich mach das, ja. What was your husband saying? He was made to wear this disgusting mask and made to grovel on the floor like a pig. Can you show us? <laughs> it's disgusting to think that people on both sides of the immigration issue are affected in such a stark manner. This is Paul Garner in central London. The BBC has announced today that its six o'clock news is to include a 12 second regional roundup to counter claims that the programme is London biased. Now, some people think 12 seconds isn't long enough, but we reckon it's a fantastic idea. In fact, Daisy thinks she could do a whole regional news roundup in half the time. So, Daisy, do you really think you can do this in six seconds? I really do think I can. Just watch me. Well, it's a tough call, but the best of luck. Here we go. <laughs> okay, can I have six seconds on the clock, please? There we go. Right, your time starts. Now. Policeman hero, woman mugged, actress open superstore, coal mine closes down, RSPCA, RNLI. A funny duck, a lucky cow, fun run, tail back, heavy snow, light rain, some sun. 2 nil. good night. Well done. <laughs> Our very own Maureen Stewart, and as she said, good night. Well, if you're a fan of Swami Dog, I can safely predict he's back on So Graham Norton with Phone Britain and Stephanie Beecham next time for.